George Ezra, blame it on me on XFM. Good morning, this is Josh Widdicombe. Hello. Good morning, producer Neil. Good morning, Josh. How are we? Very well, thanks. Good, good, good week. Not too bad, had a day off. Had the sniffles. Right, the, the sniffles. Is that yeah. a day off thing? I could... Doesn't matter. We do, we do, you know. Well, it's, do you want to? Well, it was more the fact the night before I was riding my bike home and had to stop twice to just cough up loads of flesh. Oh, my word. I was, I was quite chesty. But not riding home to Reading, from the station. From the station in Reading to my house in Reading, not from oh, right. okay, where okay. we are. And what did you do with your day off? Diagnosis, I, I worked. Diagnosis M? <laughs> no, no, I... Um, I um, the Adventures of Sherlock H? I... Loose W? I did 100% work at the kitchen table, did not skive in any way, shape really? or form. Well, fair enough. What, what a loser. Didn't catch up on match of the day at all. <laughs> Didn't... I, I don't know about catching up on Match of the Day as a thing. I, I always think once Match of the Day is gone, I never want to catch up in the week. To be honest, I much prefer just looking at the results and then imagining how it played out. Because <laughs> it's always more exciting than actually seeing it. No? I would like to be in your head well, with that for that to happen. Well, yeah, you know, I've got, I've got so much time. I haven't got time to watch, you know, Liverpool nil, hole nil. Anyway, um, I, um, I was in a room this week with Nick Knowles. Um, yeah, which um, long-term listeners may understand is quite a big moment. Quite terrified. I was quite worried because um, no, it's not that we've slagged off Nick Knowles. When you say in a room, it wasn't Brixton Academy, was it? No. Why? As in he wasn't performing and doing. Oh, it. he wasn't. No, he wasn't doing it. <laughs> wasn't the O two? It, it wasn't. No, he wasn't doing Eye for the Night, Eye for a Live. Um, but it, um, it was a, a BBC party, and Nick Knowles was there in a um, in a leather jacket, and. Um, now, we've played his song, his, his song Eye for an Eye. If you were to put a conservative estimate on it, 40 times on the show? I think something close to that, yeah. Yeah, and I thought it must have got back to him, but X of M's reach in the, um, the BBC party areas, they're not hitting that demographic, clearly. <laughs> or Knowles, or Knowles thought the ultimate revenge is to pretend I don't care. <laughs> I mean, the ultimate revenge is to wear a trilby on your Twitter profile, pic, <laughs> clearly. But <laughs> he, I'm sure he's a very nice man. We just we just found his song quite an intense experience. What would you have done if you were me in that situation? Would you would you have gone up and said, or would you have steered away from him whenever he came near you in the room? I would. I chose column B. Yeah, the latter. Yeah, yeah. Hide, hide. And do, do you think he knows? I... No, I don't think he knows. No, no, no. good. Well, let's keep it that way. Josh Podcast. Now it is time for any other business. Uh, we we like to, uh, you know, we like to open the doors, really, to our listeners here and let them, let them you know, criticise at will. So if, if they've got any minor criticisms, then um, feel free to send them in and we will uphold them with this sound. Or reject them with with no sound because we never reject them really. It's not, I don't I don't remember the last one we rejected because to even get read out on air they'd normally have to be right. <laughs> if anything, it's a flawed system. Yeah. If anything, we shouldn't be vetting these. We should be li- opening the email inbox live. But I mean, is that radio? Who cares? Right? Is it? <laughs> it's a form of radio. It's a form of. Radio. I suppose the the question of is that radio is more defined by whether it's on the radio than what it is. But For instance, different... if me and you to, you know, if me, you and Charles were to kiss now, it'd still be radio. <laughs> Don't worry, Charles. <laughs> I'm not suggesting it. I'm not suggesting it as, as radio. I'm saying the medium yes. d- dictates whether it's radio or not. Yep. So I'm doing my own any other business. <laughs> Upheld that one. Right, and um, if only we had a kissing sound effect throughout... No, no. <laughs> oh my what that was like for a cartoon you know when in a cartoon your li- the lips go all long anyway right <laughs> dear Josh producer Neil and intern Charles it was with great sadness that I write to inform you of Josh's glaring error in episode 83 of the podcast just after the 12 minute mark of the show Neil who had finished an anecdote about his brazen contempt for the conditions on his train ticket how's that going I am in further correspondence uh, email correspondence demanding a meeting with the CEO Oh, my word. And you're a man who claims he's too busy. 
Neil claimed he wanted his free copy of The Times, which they've put in um, quotation marks, as if, <laughs> as if they've never heard it before. His free copy of The London Times and The Manchester Guardian. Sidebar AOB, this is not his to have. His ticket entitled him to a journey, not a newspaper. Yeah, fair enough. At this point, Josh, with a guffaw of ridicule, insisted that the paper was available online behind a firewall. A firewall is a network security system that controls the incoming and outgoing network traffic based on applied rules set. The Times is behind a paywall, a system that prevents internet users from accessing web page content without paid prescription, uh, subscription. Yours with ped pedantry, Liam. Yeah, I mean, bang on. Bang on. But um, also from Adam in Litchfield as well. Um, so, how do you take your view that you shouldn't have been entitled to a free copy of the Times? I take it I've had everyone, every day this week, I've had a free copy of the Times by the day I was off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. No wonder that Rupert Murdoch's struggling so badly. <laughs> I, I have been catching up with the podcast and noticed that in the Live from the Edinburgh Fringe Night 1 podcast, Josh associated Malcolm X with the Black Panthers. Do you think Malcolm X was in the Black Panthers? He was not. The Black Panthers were formed in 1966, and Malcolm X died in 1965. Cherry. Knowledge. It's the same reason that he didn't play for England's World Cup winning team as well. <laughs> right, finally. In last week's episode, number 83, in the official X of M designation, during Nathaniel Metcalfe's segment, TV Get With The Times, Josh pointed out that the audience would have to be heavily briefed to respond to Bruce Forsyth's opening participatory gambit, nice to see you, in the correct way. While I'm not arguing that such a briefing was no doubt necessary in this catchphrase-heavy catch, catchphrase phase of Bruce Forsyth's career, the line was actually, nice to see you to see you, to which the response could only be nice. I don't know if that's true. That's not the only response. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, um, a, a response that would require only the lightest of touches briefing-wise. Yours pedantically, Rob. I researched this... Uh, catchphrase heavy um, section of Bruce Forsyth's career on Wikipedia <laughs> there's a section on uh, the generation game called catchphrases how many catchphrases he had well, let me quickly run you through them didn't he she stroke he stroke she stroke they do well <laughs> uh, let's meet the eight who are gonna generate <laughs> that's not, that can't be one do we think that's I don't know let's have a look at the old scoreboard I don't know if that's a catchphrase that's just instruction um, obviously this one nice to see you see nice uh, good game good game I hope you're playing this at home <laughs> give us a twirl that's not a Bruce Forsyth catchphrase which was said to hostess An Anthea Redfern to show off her dress finally you'll remember this one um to Rosemary Ford, what's on the board? What, what's on the board, Miss Ford? Do you remember that? I do remember that one. And I clicked on Rosemary Ford because I was interested to see what happened to her. And she's married to Robert Lindsay. Really? <laughs> Unbelievable! Wow. There you go. So if you, I mean, that, I, that seems a real, yeah. <laughs> Dear Josh, producer Neil and intern Charles, loath as I am to AOB a fellow AOBer. When it comes to two of my favourite topics, open brackets montages in Euro '96. <laughs> I feel I have to get involved. Last week, Podcast 82, Mark, AOB and Mark claimed Josh had confused two cast songs, and it was actually Walk Away by cast that was used. <coughs> I'm very, um, coffee, sorry. Have a quick sip of tea. Yeah? A little fill. <laughs> that was the loudest slip, sip of tea I've ever had. I could, I heard it going down my body. Um... However, Josh clearly stated in both podcasts he was referring to the montage after the England-Scotland game. Now, I distinctly remember Cars Walk Away being used in a montage, but I definitely remember the accompanying images were of England in a fateful grey strip and shots of Gareth Southgate being comforted by Earl Tell. Does that bring a tear to your eye, Neil? Nope. No? No. Why not? You're English. This melancholic song was therefore surely used for, for after the England-Germany game or the end of the tournament as opposed to the more joyful triumph over the Scots. Open brackets, sorry, Neil, close brackets. Yours pedantically, L. Murphy. This has dragged on for weeks. Let, let's, let's put this to bed. We should really just watch it on YouTube <laughs> instead of every week getting an email discussing a montage that is literally at our fingertips. It's 2014, Neil. What are we going to do? I'll try and watch it during the Beastie Boys, which is the next song. Okay, that's a real kick in the teeth for the Beastie Boys. 
<laughs> I mean, when the Beastie Boys really broke in the late 80s, and they were ripping up the rule book completely, coming over here, taking the VW signs off cars, did they really think that they'd be played on the radio by a man who was watching a montage set to cast? <laughs> Dear Josh from Producer Neil, in episode 82 of the podcast, Josh was correctly lambasted for mistakenly suggesting that the 1999 Ryder Cup was held in Brooklyn, New York, and not Brookline, Massachusetts. Josh happily agreed to, and I quote, stick to 90s football references. Imagine my astonishment when only with his next breath, Josh proceeded to make another throwaway error about golf, stating, Brooklyn doesn't seem like the kind of place you would have an 18-hole golf course. Brooklyn, in fact, is home to several top-quality golf courses. Can you please, and I can't stress this enough, stick to 90 football references, yours pedantically, Graham Cassidy from Sterling. I will never mention golf again. If you want to AOB, josh at xfm.co.uk, this is the Beastie Boys or cast, depending which room you're in. Josh Whittaker, podcast, A couple of things we need to mention before we move on. Number one... When we went into that song and we just talked about Robert Lindsay getting married to Rosemary Ford from The Generation Game, Neil's quote, word for word, I've written it down, was, that would have been a great wedding to go to. <laughs> I think it would have been. What ambition you've got that you'd love to go to Rosemary Ford's wedding. Why would it have been great? I think just to mingle with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> or awkward when Nick Knowles is on the same side of the room as you. Um, also, um, Sunday Supplement um, on, is on our TV silently, and we discussed that when Jimmy Hill used to promote, present it, it's set in a bre- in, it was set in his kitchen, and to keep the pretense up between each um, between, going into each break, he'd mention that he was going to perform a kind of breakfasty task, like I'm oh, just going to go and warm up the croissants. So let's incorporate that for the rest of the morning. Um, I'm just going to go and plunge the cafeteria. This is XFM. Josh Podcast XFM. You know, it's time to talk about the topics we want. We want to hear from our listeners, Neil. We, I mean, we already have via any other business. Um, to be honest, we open a much more, much more open policy than a lot of people. In fact, maybe we should be clamping down on them getting involved. But, you know, we'll, we'll carry on with it. Occasionally. Occasionally, you know. We'll, we'll talk between each other, but generally, we just let the listeners listen to themselves. <laughs> Isn't that the slogan of the show? Let the listeners listen to themselves. I'll get the voiceover to say it. And then Particularly if the, the listener's slogan. George Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway um, two topics we want to talk about today. Um, number one, um, this is... Um, we haven't revealed yet that we are doing... We've got an exclusive... You know, the news of the world's gone, so we've landed the big exclusive. James Acaster will be on from 12, talking about how he's finally got his cabbaging revenge on a seven-year-old boy. Nine. Nine-year-old boy. He's a... Or were you saying no in German? (laughs) (laughs) Um, um, (laughs) James Acaster's got his revenge. Um, He has his cabbaged back. We don't know the details of it. He will be revealing them live. I don't know, I think he's arriving at the building via the back entrance um, and um, under, a, uh, under a sheet. Um, so, topic for today, petty ways you've taken your revenge. This, this will appeal to our petty listeners. Um, I am, um, I, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to sound petty, but um, I came out of a long-term relationship, um, when, when did this have been? It doesn't really matter, about 2007. 2009. So, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Either way, I kept the towels. <laughs> oh, yeah. Enjoy drying your hair on your own. <laughs> yeah? The whole set. What are you going to do? Use a bath mat. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> the whole set of towels look bad towels. No, they, were, they weren't matched, mate. All right. Just all the towels. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Good work. Yeah, I like it. I like that. Any, any uh, petty revenge you've had? I couldn't think of one myself, but what I do remember is I worked in a news agents, and um, one time a paper boy let the manager down, and he had to do the paper round himself. <laughs> what an image! Yeah. Oh my word, that's like uh, the TV show Back to the Floor, in which Theopathetus would go and work in La Senza. <laughs> well, there's an image. Yeah. Um, but the next time the Did paper you boy... like that image? <laughs> no. All right. The next time the paper boy came in, yeah. while he was putting the papers in his bag, the manager went out and let down his back tyre so it Whoa. would take him longer. So he literally let him down? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he, took, he, he took metaphorical revenge? Yeah. You're going to let me down, I'm going to let you down. Wow. Yeah. Surely that's not allowed. Um, the other 
the other is, um, and this is yours, um, if you'd like to lead this, Neil. Well, I, I've realised... Just so you know, by the way, you need to turn off that screen. Wes Brown has just made the biggest mistake on Sunday Supplement <laughs> of all time. Right, anyway, carry on. Well, um, the 90s are back. There's no denying that. Musically, fashion, can't turn around without it being the 90s. Sorry, are you, are you reading out from a... Uh, a feature in Guardian Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> You're reading Hadley Freeman's column. The 90s are back. Okay. And this is more for the late 90s, but yesterday I was um, on Reading High Street and yeah. I, saw, I saw a guy walking towards me with um, big baggy jeans, yeah. black puffer jacket, white vest on and um, closely cropped bleach blonde hair. Oh, yeah. I was like, wow, he is really bringing back Eminem. Oh, wow. Are you, are you sure it wasn't an Eminem? Because I don't know how, how much work he's getting these days. <laughs> Pretty sure it wasn't Eminem. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, what, wow, what so are you was, doing? So, you, and so, you want, thought, you want, what's happened to Eminem? Is that your topic? <laughs> yeah. Has anyone seen Eminem? <laughs> Has anyone seen Eminem? <laughs> um, what was it? Well, I was thinking about kind of being inspired by your heroes or kind of uh, imitating personalities. Oh, yes. I am, um, once when I was a kid, I don't know if I've told this, but um, I, uh, I had a, a video of... Um, a live, a live concert by Dire Straits. Um, that I seem to remember started, you know, you know, like um, on you often get on stand-up DVDs. There'll be like a, a thirty-second intro that will be like the person walking to the gig or something. Yeah. But I seem to remember it started with Dire Straits playing pool in a pub. <laughs> but uh, it didn't inspire me to get into pool. Uh, that was just because it's a wonderful game. Uh, but um, Mark Knopfler wore some white shoes. And I thought, I want some white shoes. <laughs> uh, but I never got my white shoes. But I remember going to the shop and they said, what do you want? And I said, white like Martin Opfler. <laughs> and I, I wore a headband for six years. No, I didn't. Um, have you ever been inspired by your heroes? Not that I can remember. I'm just making a note of a potential Christmas present for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things we're talking about is petty ways you've taken revenge... But we don't want to talk about that. No. Although we've got a really good one about a whiskey bottle that we will get to. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, the fact I've said a whiskey bottle, we know where it's going. Um, imitate your heroes um, in the fashion stakes. And we didn't realise Intern Charles... Um, how, uh, what, have you ever done this, Intern Charles? Well, what you said, but... I'm just... uh, yeah. Um, but, well, I think it almost ten years ago now when uh, Dermot O'Leary hosted Big Brother's Little Brother... He had a Lana Scott jump, and I thought, that looks really nice on him. I'm going to go buy one. <laughs> and I, I used, I used, BBLB. Yeah, I used my, my birthday money to oh, buy a very what? expensive jump. What colour? Uh, green. Fitting? Yeah. Pipe. Still wear it now. Do you? Yes. Dermot doesn't. I know, yeah. Would you, have you, have you can't started wearing, like, well-cut suits? Because he's now on The X Factor. Yeah, I can't afford those. I bet he wears a Lana Scott jump when he's doing his show on a different radio station we can't talk about. Very nice man. <laughs> I, mean, I think, I mean, so d were you a big fan of BBLB or just DOL? I think a bit of both. Bit of both? Yeah, he looked very trendy. I think at the time... And then when, when Russell Brand going, took over the reins, were you tempted to... Uh, no, I never did the hair. Or, you never did the hair? No. It's an amazing bit. So far, in Dressing Like We Heroes, we have Eminem, Mark Knopfler and Dermot O'Leary. <laughs> <laughs> X of M at the cutting edge. You and me song, The Wanna Dies. Nish Kumar has joined us now with Singing Along. Because it's always you and me forever, Josh. Ah, <laughs> lovely. You know, I, on, I, I've got a, um, I got a cab here and... Um, Ooh, money bags! Well, <laughs> well it was an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, small money bags! <laughs> um, and, uh, I mean... He, uh, like a Prayer by Madonna came on the radio. Oh, really? Is, I mean, we can all agree it's an absolute tune. Yes, it's a great song. It's a great song. And um, I started humming along absentmindedly, and he just went, what a song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember when I first got an iPod, and I yeah. think I didn't... I obviously just forgot what was going on around me but I was in boots and everyone was looking at me and it's because I was rapping along that's oh, right rapping what? along to Jesus Walks by Kanye West <laughs> oh wow <laughs> um, now uh, well we're going to talk about imitating your heroes uh, in the fashion sense I hope it's not Kanye West <laughs> <laughs> um, we are talking about this we've had some great ones in from listeners we will come to them particularly um, looking forward to Andrew in Mile End 
who is a fan of Radiohead. Let's not speculate <laughs> on what. But, uh, Nish, um, what have you ever imi- have you ever made a fashion choice to imitate your heroes? Well, I've got one that's not from not mine, and I've got one that's sort of tangentially yeah. related. But it's because because I'm obsessed with Jimi Hendrix. I basically yeah. used to gr- like grow my hair. I used to have a massive afro when I was right. in university. <laughs> And um, I also used to then accessorise that with a T-shirt that had a big picture of Jimi Hendrix on it. <laughs> and I've talked about this in stand oh, before. Yeah. yeah, I used to walk up, and a guy who lived uh, on the same block as me at university <laughs> was talking about Jimi Hendrix. So I got involved in the conversation. And he said, I, did, I didn't realise you were such a big fan of Jimi Hendrix. So I was like, yeah. And I pointed to my T-shirt, which I was wearing at the time. Yeah. And he said, I... oh, is that Jimi Hendrix? I said, yeah, of course it is. And he said, oh, I thought it was you. <laughs> like... <laughs> He, and he, because I, like, and I mean, in for a moment, I was m- more delighted than I've ever been in my entire life because obviously somebody thought I looked like Jimi Hendrix. But the problem yeah. was that he had thought that I had had a T-shirt made with my own face on it. And the worst thing is that underneath the picture of Jimi Hendrix, which he thought was me, it said, awesome experience. Like, I'd really been like... This is real. and what's worse about that is he had never like we spoke quite a lot. He awesome had never experience. thought he had never thought to question it. Wow! He had thought that I'd had a t-shirt made How with my own did face look on like it. Jimi Hendrix, o- almost ne- not at all. I, no. In my head, I looked exactly yeah. like Jimi Hendrix. What would you, you dress like, Jimi Hendrix? Yeah, I used to have like <laughs> well, apart from the t-shirt. Obviously. Well, I used to wear. I used to have this a guitar like, on the wrong way round. Yeah, guitar on the wrong way round, which I used to intermittently bite. Um, <laughs> it was on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. flaming guitar. Yeah, flaming guitar. And then I used to have these jeans that I thought maybe looked like Jimi Hendrix because they were <laughs> they were quite tight at the top. Yeah, and quite flared at the bottom. Oh, yes. And I I also used to wear a pair of. It wasn't. This wasn't necessarily specifically a Jimi Hendrix thing, but I had a pair of white cowboy boots. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that I used to wear. There was. Just generally, Mark part of, yeah. <laughs> no, it was. I mean, the, it was not that level of dire straits. Um, but my what brother, was the, what was the other one? You had? Yeah, yeah, my brother, when he was a kid, what went to the hairdressers? He must have been about six or seven, mm. and he, my mum was going to have him just like cut his hair the normal way, and he insisted on having a bowl cut so that he could look like Jim Carrey from Dumb and Dumber. Oh, <laughs> oh my word! And he explained that in full to the hairdresser and for did like they do two it? years. Do they do it? Well, no, because my mum into. Intervened, but then he took matters into his own hands, and by matters I mean a pair of scissors, <laughs> and cut his own fringe so that he could look more like wow. Jim Carrey in Dumb and Dumber. That's amazing. Josh Widdicombe podcast. This is the Josh Widdicombe show. Nish Kumar is in attendance. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, to, 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 we're going to have one of each. The two things we're talking about: uh, imitating your heroes and um, petty ways you've taken revenge. Which would you like first? Uh, I want to hear a petty way someone's taken revenge. Okay, oh, by the way, producer Neil's also here. <laughs> Present. I took revenge on some ignoramus. What a word, what a word. Huge opening sentence. <laughs> Huge opening sentence. You, go, you got in big. You go hard, you go early. <laughs> <laughs> I took revenge on some ignoramus who blanked me and never said thank you when I moved my gear so he could get to his locker. The idiot went back in the gym, leaving his locker unlocked. I took all his gear out and put it in one of the other 200 lockers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, I mean, what would you do if you were him? Would you, you wouldn't even check the other 200, would you? No, I don't know what, you'd assume he'd been robbed. Like, surely yeah, you'd assume yeah. he'd been robbed. Yeah, so uh, Wes in Grimsby then, is uh, in serious trouble. But then I think we may be ascribing too much rationality to an ignoramus. <laughs> yes. I mean, if the guy was a true ignoramus, he would have just gone, oh, my things appear to have become invisible. <laughs> right. <laughs> Morning, chaps. This is um, this is imitating your heroes. <laughs> Red excited. Josh has got a look in his face that tells me this is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> morning, chaps. Oh, wait, wait, morning, chaps. When I got into Radiohead, I thought it was a great look to try and imitate Tom York's lazy eye. <laughs> <laughs> so I go into school with one eye slightly closed. <laughs> It didn't last long as apparently it was, in quotation marks, strange. (laughs) (laughs) Andrew in Mile End. (laughs) Andrew, we need to know how old you were when you were doing this. (laughs) That is amazing, isn't it? That's incredible. (laughs) My my sister once, um, she thought it'd be cool to get a brace at school. So when she went into what, like a, like a, a teeth, brace, a teeth yeah. brace. I thought she so like when she went, went into, into the like doctor, she like, like no, no. She, she went into the dentist and she'd like just her jaw out. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> attempt to kind of convince that she needed a break. It would have surely caused more gamut damage than good. <laughs> yeah. You've been wrongly prescribed a brace. But yeah, and then the irony being, as an adult, once she'd realised braces were yeah. she would have had to have a brace to re-correct <laughs> the damage oh. she had done. Josh Whittaker Podcast. Coming up, Nish Kumar is, uh, of course, still here. Um, yo, yo, yo! Yeah, and um, he'll be playing Call My Josh, and as a fan of Conspiracy Theories, he'll be playing it on uh, his favourite five episodes, um, five real or faked episodes of The x Files. Oh, good. Yeah, and um, as Jimmy Hill would say, I'm just off to segment the grapefruit. <laughs> Nish Kumar's still here, and this is uh, now the point in the Josh Riddickham show where we come to... Um, call my Josh, in which uh, I've come up with five real or fake uh, things of a genre. We've got, a, and you have to say real or fake. We've got a leaderboard. How's it? How's it looking? Well, the only score that matters really is James Acaster, who scored five last week. I can't believe on that. Saved by the Bell episode. What's who's bottom? Is there anyone on three? Susie Ruffler thing got three. Oh dear. Oh so right. Was, <laughs> and this week. Uh, you're going to be doing X Files episodes. Very fitting. Oh, very nice. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. So, um, shall we start? Let's Either do it. Number one. Okay. No, I've got the title and a brief synopsis. Okay. Great. <laughs> no smoke without fire. The smoking man offers Mulder some advice, but he's no longer smoking. Has he kicked his habit, or is he not who he seems? <laughs> when we, when you, as soon as you said X Files episodes, I thought you're not. The, fake, the first fake one is going to be one where the cigarette smoking man quits. That, is, <laughs> that was the first thought in my head. Was there is going to be a fake one where the cigarette smoking man... Well, that is 100% fake. Correct. <laughs> Ex-cops. <laughs> Mulder and Scully are followed by a film crew who are actually characters from the fellow Fox TV show Cops. It's a crossover show. <laughs> Okay. To help promote the TV show Cops. I think this is fake as well. Do you? Yeah. Incorrect! No! Oh! Well, you might as well play on, but it really is academic. <laughs> <laughs> Je suis A genie grants Mulder's wish for peace on Earth by killing everyone and leaving Mulder as the only man alive. Oh. Oh, well, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? I'm going to say that's fake. I think a genie might be outside of the X Files remit. As um, it's interesting that you're such a fan of conspiracy theorists that you're not buying any of these. Yeah, I'm not buying <laughs> any of this. Yet. Do you not believe in the X Files? <laughs> <laughs> I just think the genie was too far. It was true. No way. One out this of three. This is on. This you need two to just <laughs> not finish bottom now. Okay, episode four. Tomorrow Never Knows. Was John Lennon an alien? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what? So there's been one fake one and two real ones. That's not how you work it out. <laughs> um, was John Lennon an alien? Do you think that would have been an episode? Show your workings. Yeah, if... It feels like it would have been too obvious, but then at the same time, they did do a lot of episodes. And by the end, especially when Robert Patrick was in it, they were really scraping the barrel. So I'm going to say that's true. It's false! He's a one out of four! <laughs> oh, it's disastrous. Right, the final one. <laughs> Mulder's Secrets Revealed. In a crossover with Magic Secrets Revealed, Skinner brings in the masked magician to help Mulder solve a case of a Las Vegas act who may actually have magical powers. <laughs> <laughs> what? Do you remember Magic Secrets Revealed? No, I don't remember Magic Secrets Do you know Magic, Secrets, you remember no. Magic Secrets Revealed? So, uh, Magic Secrets Revealed had Skin, you know Skinner from the X-Files? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. So he was the host as himself. Right, And okay. then there was a masked magician. Right. Who performed tricks and then showed you how he did them. And there was an amazing episode where he was, um, he was unmasked. Right. But of course no one knew who he was. Because it, it wasn't David Blaine. <laughs> and he'd have, like, sexy assistants, right? And it was it was amazingly got away with it, because Skinner's voiceover would always make, like, kind of... Well, not even borderline, like, misogynistic comments. What channel like, was this on? 
well, Channel 5, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah, that makes so, sense. So Sorry. Be, no, but it was not on in America. Oh, it was on ITV. Oh, I take it all back. That makes so, perfect so sense. So it, um, it used to, uh, so, you know, he'd go, um, and now he's going to cut, you know, cut through the woman, <laughs> and then he'd go, and what a beautiful woman we're about to lose. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, so creepy. And she, she reappears in a, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. in a bag. And wouldn't you like to be that bag? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember it? Yeah. 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 I didn't remember that. at all. Yeah. I was probably too busy listening to Jimi Hendrix. Um, <laughs> Hendrix Secrets, Secrets Revealed. <laughs> Secrets Revealed, yeah. Um, Mulder's Secrets Revealed in a crossover with Magic Secrets Revealed. I'm going to say this is false as well. Correct. Yes. So about a five. <laughs> that is appalling. Bottom of the leaderboard. I know. We, we, we need to watch some Magic Secrets Revealed. It's a yeah, really I great mean, show. Yeah. Do you like magic? Yeah, I like magic. I mean, it's brilliant. Well, it must be on YouTube. That sounds like exactly the sort of show that every single episode is on YouTube. Yeah, particularly the revealing one of the guy, which is just one of the most <laughs> disappointing bits of television you've ever seen. Josh Whittaker. Uh, producer Neil, still here with Nish Kumar. Good morning. Yo, yo. <laughs> yo I don't yo. know why I'm trying to urbanise things at the moment. No, 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 you're just, just, you know, society generally. <laughs> <laughs> If you read the, if you read the, the, the uh, scare literature. On Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, now uh, this is uh, this is a good one. On um, we were looking for petty ways you've taken revenge. Hello, I had this friend. That, see, I'll, I'll give you the first one to see whether you think you should take revenge. Okay. I had a friend who used to copy all the bands I like and pretended to like them more than me. <laughs> So I murdered him. <laughs> so, one day I told her about this new band, Tinfoil Towers, which was completely fake. <laughs> she then went around all day talking about how she loved them and wanted to see them live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is a cruel blow, isn't it? That is a cruel blow. <laughs> oh! That is... Yeah, it feels like... It feels like it's not so much fighting fire with fire as fighting paper with fire. Yeah, it like, doesn't feel like it deserves it. <laughs> it does feel like a bit of an overreaction. I mean, my brother, whenever we, whenever I have dinner with my brother, he always waits for me to order mm. and then orders exactly what I order. Because <laughs> he knows does it drives me crazy. Yeah, because he has massive order envy. You know, when you... When uh, you yeah. A lot of people, when they go to eat at a restaurant, will, as soon as they see what everyone else sort of think, I've completely... Oh, I hate those people. I've got... I've got absolutely no time for anyone that asks you what you're going to go order. That shouldn't <laughs> affect you in Well, you'll be sat there with me. What are you going to order? Doesn't matter. But that... Does not matter to you, mate. So it's your own meal. You're not having any of mine. <laughs> Stop asking. I've never seen Whittaker this animated. It's just absurd. I, I, I'm, I, one of, I'm, I'm good at very few things, but one of them, ordering food. I'm an absolute master of it. I know exactly I what I want. I get it right every single time. I, oh, the other people that annoy me. Yeah. And it's the same people. Right. When the person comes over, can I take my order? Yeah. You go first, and um, I'll just pick something under the pressure. I need the pressure. <laughs> no, you don't need the pressure. You need to man up. That's what you need to do. You're not taking a penalty in a yeah. World Cup final. You're just but, picking your dinner. Yeah, they, they don't practice uh, ordering off a menu at home because you can't replicate the pressure. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe. Podcast XFM. Prodigy, breathe. Yeah, okay, that'll do. On XFM, Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> Producer Neil. Morning. Nish Kumar. Hi there, Josh. And now, James Acaster. Hello, Josh. Now, we all know you're here for a reason. I always am, though. Yeah, you always are. <laughs> I just meant on, on, on God's Earth. Yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, just this is going to be your David Icke though. moment. Yeah. Um, so, I like uh, the idea that sometimes he's here just because he's in the area. Yeah. Just in Leicester Square, just, just going to M&M World. Has anyone ever been just in the area in Leicester <laughs> <No>. Square? <laughs> just swinging by. But just, but people from outside London who, who do listen to the show probably think when we go, when they say XM live from Leicester Square, it sounds quite salubrious. Mm. I mean, it's probably the worst place in the world. Yeah, it's <laughs> certainly, it's certainly... I was gigging in Piccadilly Circus yesterday night and it, it did make me think... I mean, it's very difficult to make a continued case for the ongoing human race. Like, it really is. <laughs> it was. It was really. It's. It was bleak. There were so many fights, 
and police just sort of watching the fights, just being yeah. like, look, we could get involved, but at the same time. Also, the cinema work. tickets are so expensive. <laughs> 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 that first time you go into a cinema in Leicester Square <laughs> and you don't know, no one told you, you go, oh, just have, uh, just have, have one for one. They go, yeah, that'll be £25. <laughs> <laughs> and you assume it's going to be like a special screen. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> a special film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must be in 4D. Seen, have you not seen Goodfellas with the real ending? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is this, a gold film? <laughs> I must be in it. I must be in the film. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I mean, are you a fan of listening? You've got to be a company man. Um, it's an area that I work in. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't have been less equivocal about that. I, I do often wonder how many tourists have got me just I, skulking across the back of their photo trying to get to the tube. <laughs> well, I always wonder, if I came to London as a tourist... Um, would I? What would I do? Would I do all straight the- to M M&M and M World, mate? Straight yeah. to M M&M and M World. M&M Selfies World. in front of the M and M's. <laughs> I almost. I lo- I've been in M M&M and M World once, and I just. I almost resorted to physical violence. For the <laughs> it's it's the worst. Abs- it's absolutely the worst place in the world. <laughs> Who is theming? Why is? Why does it even exist? It's I went in there with Nick Helm, who was the worst person going there with, <laughs> to a very short temper. And uh, the whole time, I was looking for the peanut butter M&M's, which I really like, and we couldn't find them. So we asked one of the people, do you have peanut butter M&M's? And he went, oh, no, sorry, you have to go to special shops to get those. And Nick just threw his arms in the air and gestured at all the M&M's. <laughs> special shop? Yeah, yeah. This is a special shop, mate! They have so few varieties of M&M's yeah. that yeah. aren't basically toys. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. But aren't are even m M&M, did, did I miss this? Are M&M's even that popular? That they need their own... Shop. Well, no, I don't, I don't think anyone was calling for it. No, I don't think, yeah. I don't <laughs> think there was a local council petition. We're, yeah. so, we're so sick of Kit Kat land. Yeah. <laughs> we want M&M world now. So many people <laughs> loved M&M's. They'd already printed up their own citizen's passports <laughs> for M&M world, but they just needed an actual place to call home. Kit Kat land sounds like the kind of thing someone would say and get sacked from UKIP. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people coming over here from Kit Kat land on the, on the Yorkie boat. <laughs> um, Absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> what right. I want to know is, does Eminem World have to conform to UK laws, or is it like Monaco? Is it like <laughs> its own principality within England? That was actually where Lewis Hamilton was originally going to move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to avoid tax. He didn't move to avoid tax. He moved to Switzerland because he couldn't handle the celebrity. That's yeah. what he said. He could, yeah. Come on, yeah. mate. None of them believes it. Right, also, let's move on. he's a huge on. fan of concealed Nazi gold. <laughs> <laughs> and chocolate, which brings us back to Eminem World. <laughs> <laughs> Josh no. Left hand free, Alt J. There we go. Um, there we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, if Alt J are listening, they're just I'm, turning I'm, off their radio. I like their new album. I'm going down. That was really good. I do think they've made a mistake in not calling it. There we go. <laughs> the new album from Alt J. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> Featuring the tracks. That's that. <laughs> and oh well. <laughs> and there's always next year. <laughs> I think it's a good album, and I think it's done very well, hasn't it, Neil? It's a great album. It was a really good song. I really yeah. enjoyed yeah. that. Oh, awesome. come on, Nish. <laughs> um, I've just, I've just I heard of Alt J in other news. You no. Know. I, I, Josh, you, I cannot overestimate You've just how heard out of Alt J. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever actually heard one of their songs. They before. won the Mercury Music Prize. The, mm. the, the once prestigious Mercury Music <laughs> Prize. Don't worry, Nish. Up until now, I thought they were called ALTJ. <laughs> pronounced every letter. <laughs> Um, now, um, we've had a tweet in, haven't we, um, Nish, about uh, Eminem World? Yeah, people don't know what Eminem World is. No. Lucky. Oh, so jealous of those people. Yeah. <laughs> I remember a time when I didn't know what Eminem World was. Yeah. Um, once, I mean, the, the, yeah, so what, what, how would you describe it? It's a large glass building. It's the end of civilization as we know it. <laughs> that, that's not helping. <laughs> it is the only shop. Well, the first time I saw it, I did a double take. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe no, my I've eyes. I've got one. I've got one, and I don't know if I've. I've if this is really, um, but in between Liverpool Street and um, and uh, Shoreditch High Street, 
tubes or overground, doesn't matter. Um, there is a coffee and vapor cigarette bar. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I go past, I just say, what? Oh, come on! No, I, I, I have to say that. I, so the M M&M and M shop have vapor is vapor cigarettes anywhere. Yeah, I know, but I, yeah. it's not. That's not as big a double take for me as the, another shop which is opened again just down the road, the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. Oh yeah, now, yeah. That, yeah. that's an American brand. Yeah, it's an American brand, which I assumed was a reference, obviously, to the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company in Forest Gump but yeah. they have a shop for merchandise what? none of which references the film Forest Gump <laughs> it's shrimp. yeah it's just all shrimp and it just says Bubba Gump and there is not well, they don't even sell a Forest Gump DVD what I like about that is that clearly I know that when they started they were quite um, Forest Gump themed because I heard that they used right, to do okay. Forest Gump trivia to people sure. and now there's clearly been a meeting at some point where someone's gone guys we got to distance ourselves from the forest. <laughs> forest Gump, yeah. Uh, I think it's getting a bit silly, and I want to focus on the shrimp. Yeah, what yeah, I yeah. like is that in 2014, Nish was quite excited about the idea of buying some Forest Gump memorabilia. Yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I, was, I thought it was going to be what great. Gonna I thought you'd get like a box, box of, of chocolates, chocolates without the paper in it so you didn't know what was going to be in it. Buy some leg braces. Yeah, buy some <laughs> leg, braces. leg braces. Buy a commemorative bullet that you can put up your butt like Lieutenant kind of Dan. Yeah, okay, and let, let's not talk about any of the other things. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Um, <laughs> did you like Forrest Gump? Did you like Forrest Gump? Yeah, Forrest Gump. I think Forrest Gump is fine. I'm, it's not like one of my favourite movies. I just thought if you have a shop called Bubba Gum Shrimp, you have a moral responsibility <laughs> yeah. to at least have some reference to the film yeah. Forrest Gump. You had a really bad time in Kaiser Soze sandwiches as well. Yeah. <laughs> Awful. Especially the ending. <laughs> it wasn't a sandwich all along. Yeah, it, wasn't, it was yeah. a roll. <laughs> sitting, right. in a, sitting in his new cafe called A Spoonful of Sugar, getting really angry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Listen up. It's happening. James A. Caster has got his revenge. Uh, let's just see who is in the room for this event. Producer Neil. Present. Josh Riddicum, present. Intern Charles. Hello. Nish Kumar. Never been more excited about anything in my entire life. James A. Caster, you've been cabbaged for two months, three months? Yeah. Uh, and what's happened? Finally, Josh. <coughs> Finally. You're looking at a new man. <laughs> <laughs> who could hold his head up high, walk down the street... Without fear of ridicule. Because <laughs> the score has been levelled. With a nine-year-old boy. Nine -year -old yeah, boy. yeah. This nine-year-old boy, he knows what the, what the score is now. On Friday, I got... Now, originally, I was going to get in... My friend was going to drive me yeah. to Cambridge, where, where the boy lives. <laughs> <laughs> but he had to pull out. So... I had to pay for a train. <laughs> so that's the, the first of the expenses. I'd like to point out the entire cabbaging cost me over £100. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably early doors, I should point that out. Yep. I spent over £100 on cabbaging this nine-year-old. I'm still the wow. winner. I'm still the winner. Yeah. Uh, got the train, got to Cambridge, and, uh, oh, by the way... I, David refused to help me. Uh, yeah. David Trent is a mixed dad. dad. Yeah. He's my friend, and he refused to help me, so I had to... He uh, refused to help you bully his son? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely <laughs> mind-blowing. Really bad. <laughs> really bad. <laughs> well, bear in mind, David had guilted me after the first... When I got cabbaged by Mick the first time, David said, why didn't you cabbage him back? You're a weirdo. And had a go at me and called me weird. So I thought David would help me cabbage him back, but he refused to. Instead, he helped Mick cabbage me further another four or five times. Now... <laughs> I had to instead go uh, sneakily to David's wife and uh, she put a key out for me oh so that I'd be able to get in the house. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. So I arrived at Cambridge. In First of all, I had the conundrum of... I, I, I had to buy the cabbages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I yeah. knew what my plan was. My plan involved Have a lot of... you not tempted to rent a car? Well, no, I because... I thought you were going to say rent a I cabbage. Think we have spoken about my driving history on XFM before, Josh. <laughs> the last guy I wanted to write off a car full of cabbages. <laughs> and that'd be the way I actually go. Cab cabbaging myself to death. <laughs> Get a cabbage caught under the pedal. He couldn't break. Yeah. Cause the oh, cabbage. no! It's a Savoy! <laughs> so... <laughs> the conundrum I had was that I needed to buy the cabbages... Yeah. But I also needed to transport the cabbages to the house. Yeah. So I knew I had to get a cab. One word. A cardo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had to get a cab. So I had to decide whether I got the cab straight from the station 
yeah. to a supermarket. Yeah. Like I went to the supermarket and then tried to hail a cab with the cabbages. What, you were going to keep the cab running? The what? cab adge. The cab adge. <laughs> I, I went through that process in my head of how you can make a pun and decided against it. <laughs> you made the wrong decision, mate. You made the wrong decision. I went in to Tesco. Tesco Extra. Yeah. No cabbages on sale. <laughs> I didn't have any cabbages on the shelves. I went in a co-op. No cabbages on the shelf. Yeah, that's because Mix bought them all to send to you. That's what was going on in my head. I was like, he bought all the cabbages. What? Hold on, I'm not at home right now. What's going on? I went to Sainsbury's. F- three white cabbages. <laughs> Five red ones. <laughs> Not good enough. I bought them all, though. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you bought eight cabbages. Well, eight cabbages. Did you go self-service or did you go through the... Uh... I, I went to self-service with those, and that's annoying because you have to weigh every single one of them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a really slow process while the people behind me saw me like, loaded up a bag full of eight cabbages. This guy is going to enjoy making his own coleslaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Save me some, make you look passionate. Fortunately, they, they were all XFM fans, so they were like, hey, Caster's getting his revenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really got to this guy <laughs> then I had to then I didn't know where else to go I needed more cabbages I still haven't got enough cabbages so I went outside and hailed a taxi got in I said mate I need you to take me to somewhere where I can buy a lot of cabbages <laughs> oh, oh no God. no <laughs> it's like a cabbage based remake of the film Collateral <laughs> yeah. I, said, I said I don't know my way around Cambridge you need to show so he drove me to a really like, grubby greengrocer I went in and got like five more because that's all the cabbages they have but they're quite grotty I got them then he took me to a budgins oh by the way every time I'm in these shops he's keeping the meter running outside <laughs> did he you- ask you why no, he just went, okay, fine. What, the most tense moment was when I went into Budgeons and I had to buy my own trolley. Uh, I had to do, do the one pound thing and I couldn't get the pound thing to work and it's, the meter was running. I, 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 was just like, I was like, oh man, oh man. <laughs> Got quite a lot in Budgeons. After the Budgeons shop, I had uh, 20 cabbages. <laughs> Right, I have a question at this point. Do we think that cabbaging is a Cambridge-specific activity? Because at no point has anyone questioned why you're buying up all of the yeah. cabbages. And no oh. point has the taxi driver asked why you have 15 cabbages. In Budgeons, right. I did get questioned. Right, OK. <laughs> by, by the man in front of me, who turned around and said, what are you doing? <laughs> are you having a cabbage party or something? Yeah, again... That's not a thing. And I said something like that. <laughs> oh, also in Budgeons, I bought five bags of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mini cabbages. <laughs> got in the cab. He drove me to Trent's house. Got the stuff. Went in. He didn't even ask. He just knew. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like, yeah, yeah. go to David Trent's, yeah? About time someone did this. He's cabbaged me five times this week. <laughs> Let myself in. Went up to the nine-year-old boy's bedroom. <laughs> oh, good lord! Then you knew I, he was going to be out. You knew he was going to be out. He was out. Is it what school? time of day was this? This was about. This was like one o'clock, I'd say, in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, then I set about removing all of his belongings from the room. <laughs> Just clearing the shelves <laughs> and the cupboards, <laughs> everything off the floor, and I've moved all of them. He has a lot of stuff. He has a lot of stuff. He's a hoarder. He's a proper hoarder who doesn't throw away anything. He had rocks that he'd found on the like on walks. I'm not even nice looking rocks. He had, he had he had a series of um, bouncy balls that he keeps in socks, and I don't even know why that is. <laughs> a full metal jacket kind of thing. But I, I, I got all the stuff. And I, mo- I moved all of the stuff into his parents' bedroom, <laughs> hid, hid him in that bedroom. Then I replaced all the things with the cabbages. <laughs> <laughs> so I started replacing replace them with cabbages. By the time I put all the cabbages out, so I kind of like put the cabbages on the surfaces and then peppered the Brussels sprouts between all the cabbages yeah. to fill up the gaps. Right, OK. I still wasn't happy. I went outside and I, I got another cab. I went to Tesco. No, I, no. I bought 25 more cabbages. <laughs> From, from the big Tesco this time in Fullborn. Oh my god! Fullborn Tesco has got like loads of cabbages. Oh Not anymore, it hasn't. Not anymore. Oh, 25 of them in a big trolley, got them in, got back to the house. I put the 25 new cabbages, which have covered the floor, all over the floor, oh no. all over more of the surfaces. Oh. So it looked like a nightmare. It looked horrible. So many cabbages everywhere. Before he gets, we'll play a song at, before, at the break of when you've set it up and before he gets home. Well, that is that's, that's what happened. I put all those cabbages out, I blue tacked my phone 
to the corner of the bed so it was recording the whole thing. I heard him open the door and I hid. <laughs> oh, also, I should point out, I put, like he did to me, I put a post-it on the front door saying cabbage moment. Yeah. Which is what he did to me, and I drew up my own sign saying "You got cabbaged," spelt wrong like he does. With, and then a drawing of a random bike in the corner, which is what he did to me as well. And then I hid. Josh Whitaker, the Josh Whitaker show on XFM. Nish Kumar and producer Neil are here. But and tender hooks. Uh, the important thing is James Acaster is here. After two months of a nine-year-old son of his friend sending him cabbages, he's got revenge. We've got to the point in the story where you got into his house, you left 50 cabbages and Brussels sprouts in his bedroom. Yes. You set it up, you would removed all the belongings from his bedroom, you set up your phone to film his reaction, you yeah. heard the door open. Ran away and hid. <laughs> <laughs> Did, at any point... Did you find yourself, before Mick arrived, yep. thinking, I'm stood in a nine-year-old's bedroom that yep. I have covered in cabbages. Yep. What has happened? <laughs> Nish, throughout the entire day, <laughs> I thought, this is the weirdest thing I've ever done, and this might be one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> as I was doing it, I was thinking, what has my life come to? <laughs> that I'm not even looking at the price of these cabbages. I'm just ringing them up because I want to get him so bad. Anyway. So, <laughs> press record on the phone, ran out, closed the, closed the door to his bedroom, ran into another room and hid and listened. Did you know he was going to arrive at that time? Yeah, his mum had texted me saying, just coming back from school now. So wow. I knew he was coming. Was his sister there as well? His sister had already got home and... Uh, she was in on it. Yeah, yeah. so I said, what do you think about this? She went, brilliant. <laughs> just uh, just play along with it. She said, no problem. So there's a post-it note on the front door that says cabbage moment, which is what he did to me. Right. So I hear him coming in the door going, and his mum, he's clearly said to his mum, what's that? And she's gone, I don't know, have you been cabbaging again? <laughs> so on the way in the door, he's going, I didn't do it, mum. I haven't done any oh, cabbaging today. Brilliant. I haven't brilliant. done it. And I, so I'm, I'm in the room thinking, oh no, he's about to have a full an argument with his mum. It's <laughs> my fault. But he didn't, he didn't do that. He went upstairs, and then I heard him shout, what is all my stuff doing in your bedroom? <laughs> it was mum. So why has he been in her bedroom first? Well, that door I'd left open. Oh, so he walked no. past it, saw all his stuff in the corner, and was like, why is my stuff in your room, mum? It's just like, I don't know, have you put it in there? So I didn't put it in there. Amazing. She, she sounds like she knows exactly <laughs> She's, she's yeah. doing really She's well. a real grifter. She's really, really, <laughs> really playing it. And then I hear him open Can the door to his room. Can I quickly say, we have had a tweet in from little Jason who says, you missed a trick, James. The Brussels sprouts should have gone in the socks to replace the bouncy balls. Oh. That is a good point, but, mate, if you'd seen what the Brussels sprouts look like on the surfaces, you would not be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> they look beautiful. They filled in all the gaps between the cabbages so it looked like it was pure cabbage. Now, <laughs> I hear him open the door to his bedroom, and at that point I thought... I really hope he doesn't cry. <laughs> <laughs> that was all I could think. I cannot believe that's the first time that, that possibility had entered your Before head. Before then, I'd been riding on pure adrenaline. <laughs> I've been buzzing off the fact I was doing it, but then at that point I thought, oh, there's a chance I've gone too far here. <laughs> Luckily, he started laughing. Right. Walked into his room, and then I, I, then I came out of hiding, walked in, and just shouted, shouted "Cabbage! You got cabbage, mate! Count all the cabbages!" Really lauded up in his face. <laughs> he then, I then sat down, and uh, his first reaction was to pick up his tennis racket and hit the Brussels sprouts at me one by one. <laughs> Really hard. <laughs> so I'm not being attacked by my own sprouts. <laughs> I'm just sitting there taking it. <laughs> um, <laughs> once he got that out of his system, yeah. he was happy to sit with me and admire my creation. <laughs> you know, actually, this is pretty cool. Well done. Yeah. He, uh, he, he gave me kudos for spelling cabbage the way he spells it. Yeah. Uh, for drawing the random bike. He was very impressed with it. And then he was very excited because his friend Toby would be around later. And his friend Toby had been basically calling Mick a liar for saying about he had cabbaged me and that we talked about it on the radio. <laughs> Toby didn't believe him. So Toby came round and saw that the room was full of cabbages. Amazing. And Toby is, uh, you know, also nine. And um, 
Mick's showing him and so Toby turns to me and he went so you filled a little boy's room with cabbages and I went yeah and he went real cool mate <laughs> <laughs> We're getting cabbage next, Toby, with that. <laughs> so, just to draw an end to it, what, what happened to the cabbages? The cabbages, I was very worried that I was going to, I was wasting food. So I had a gig in Cambridge that evening and I took all the cabbages with me and I handed them out at the door and everyone took a cabbage home with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, not everyone. There was more than 50 people there. <laughs> uh, one person went home empty-handed. But, um, <laughs> handed them out. And, oh, b- by the way, it's really weird when you're giving out cabbages to a room full of people how much people love red cabbage more than anything else. Like, oh, they, really? the audience were really fighting over it. I had Savoy cabbage, I had white cabbage, green cabbage, red cabbage, and um, sweetheart cabbage, which is like a bit more of a longer yeah. effort. And uh, the red cabbage, people were properly fighting over that. Everyone wanted the red cabbage, so... What, so, um, the end of the story. Did you explain to the audience what had happened? Yeah. Or did you just silently give them cabbages? Yeah. The I told them show. what had happened and said, I don't want to waste these cabbages. Please right, take okay. them home. Okay. It is a beautiful end to a beautiful tale. <laughs> and with that, we wave goodbye to cabbaging. <laughs> it's a great single. It's a great, uh, it's, it's, it's a great early single, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's great. Mm. I saw them live and they were absolutely brilliant. I wish we had time for that story. Now... <laughs> <laughs> no, just... Cut down by Whitaker. He's done it. I Finally. feel like I've been cabbaged in my soul. <laughs> now, we've ended the, the, the show with uh, James A. Custer's story about cabbaging. Um, Van de Graaff has tweeted, just racked up car parking fees, sat listening to the cabbage story, so worth it. Steve McClellan, without a doubt, the greatest and most hilarious revenge story of modern times. Just brilliant. Hashtag cabbaged um and um you've tweeted a photo haven't you i'm currently tweeting photos of the entire caper um there's a lot of photos as i covered a lot of surfaces with cabbage but um i'm tweeting them all and um if you want to hear it again uh, the podcast is available download it from itunes subscribe on itunes and um now it's just time for plugs nish uh, i am at uh, if you're in Greenwich, I'm uh, up the creek uh, doing the Sunday special uh, oh, tonight. Yes, yeah. oh, and it's great. Sam Simmons and Felicity Ward and Rangesh Ranganathan, <laughs> um, who uh, listens to this podcast. Or, um, is... or as uh, Faye Ripley tweeted when she did Extra Slice um, with him, uh, just did Extra Slice with v- Ravinda Gora. Yeah. <laughs> 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 or depending on who you speak to Nish Kumar um, uh, and then on the Monday the 1st of December I'm doing a gig called This Is Comedy 2014 uh, at the Vaudeville Theatre in London uh, with Zoe Lyons Dane Baptiste Tom Stade Russell Kane and Joel Domit who is planning to miss Hollyoaks to attend that gig. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you doing your Edinburgh show as well it's so hard uh, yeah I'll be doing that in uh, January um, okay. but follow me at, at Mr Nish Kumar on Twitter or go to my website nishkumar.co UK because really no one does <laughs> <laughs> James Acaster I am on tour at the minute uh, jamesacaster.com for tickets the next uh, 10 days I'll be at the Soho Theatre in London there we go I've just broken a pen Neil Sunday nights continue uh because that's how time works but um, <laughs> Communion presents from 7 Dave Roundtree from Blur from 9 that I also look after there we go and thank you very much for listening uh, it's been a th- uh, epic show. <laughs> what a journey. Josh Whittaker. Yes. XFM Music. Music. The Rocks.